Administration's proposed ban on menthol cigarettes is sparking concern in agriculture due to the potential impact on farmers and the rural economy. President and founder of the National Black Farmers Association, Dr. John Boyd, joined us now with further perspective. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Boyd. So what exactly is this rule aiming to do and what are your biggest concerns? Well, the ban doesn't help America's uh, tobacco farmers. And I'm a fourth generation tobacco farmer, and uh, I was taught to raise tobacco by my, my forefathers, my, my grandparents. Uh, they were sharecroppers, Lee and Ruth Robinson, and my father, uh, John Boyd Sr., taught me everything I needed to know about carrying a barn of tobacco. And to do away with uh, tobacco by uh, menthol ban, and uh, many Blacks prefer the taste of a menthol ban. So what do farmers do with the equipment uh, that that they're being put out of business. Uh, you can't do anything with a tobacco curing bond, but cure tobacco with it. You can't use uh, 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 tobacco harvesters only to, to harvest tobacco. So what is the administration proposing that uh, farmers like ourselves do uh, when we lose income like this? So it's a loss of income, not, not just for farmers, but for rural America. Uh, think of those farmers that are purchasing diesel fuel and, and lime and fertilizer and all of these things uh, to produce this laborsome uh, uh, crop. Uh, tobacco is the hardest crop to raise. Uh, if you can raise a, a bond of tobacco, you can do anything. And to lose that, uh, farmers are not just losing income, they're also losing a part of uh, history and heritage, uh, you know, right here at home. Right. And of course, I believe you're in Virginia and I know states like Kentucky and North Carolina still heavy into growing tobacco. And you talked a little bit about the ripple effects because you've got barns, you've got equipment and things that might be impacted if this ban goes through. So talk a little more about the effects of, uh, you know, kind of where all it reaches if this passes. Well, what's really prop uh, troublesome for me is uh, farmers don't seem to have a voice when these policies are, are forced on us like this. Uh, so where's the input from America's farmers? Uh, you know, has anybody sat down with the farmers to say, hey, what do you guys think about this pr proposed ban and how will it affect your, your farming operation? You know, uh, many farmers are facing uh, farm foreclosure and there's still not a, a farm moratorium in place by the administration. And I've reached out to the president about uh, putting a farm moratorium in place that would stop farm foreclosures and direct loans and guaranteed loans and other agricultural lenders. That's still not in place and we're still losing our farms. We have China who wants to buy uh, America's farmland. We have uh, Bill Gates who's uh, uh, buying American farmland and wants us uh, to buy into the idea of having fake meat. All of these things affect um, the future of America's farmers. So where's our voice and all of these decisions that are being forced that, that are being forced on us, and and this is an excellent uh, uh, example of that. Because where the FT, FDA is already putting this ban in in place, and we haven't had a voice in it. Uh, they haven't asked us how it affects us, how it affects our family. You know, tobacco will help put my children uh, uh, through through college. You know, tobacco income and uh, tobacco income uh, help generations, not just my farmer, but many many generations. And I want anybody who's looking at this. We're not debating the, the effects of tobacco. We're not, uh, it's, it's like, it, it's a choice for people who want to smoke cigarettes. It's, it's their choice. But you should also ask America's farmers how this affects them and, uh, and their farming operation. What are they going to do about this lost income is, is the biggest issue for us. And we don't have a, a voice on this. Right. Just asking for a seat at the table to be a part of that conversation. That's president and founder of the National Black Farmers Association, Dr. John Boyd. We appreciate your time today.